Hey there YouTube, welcome back to Far North Racing. Today we're gonna to be doing some tests to get an indication of how healthy the engine is in our stealth. What we wanna know is the condition of the internals in the engine. Do we have a solid base on which to build or do we have to tear the engine all the way down and do a complete rebuild from scratch? In order to do that, we need to get a feel for how well the rings are sealing in each cylinder and we need to make sure that the valve train is sealing in it. Basically, the car is capable of holding pressure in each individual cylinder. So this is the tool that is traditionally used to get a gauge of interior engine health. This is a compression tester. The way this works, that end screws into a spark plug hole. There's a check valve here that holds pressure so the gauge reads the peak pressure that you see. And then you just crank the engine over with this thing attached until the gauge reaches its peak pressure. Inside the shop manual is a specification that says the ideal pressure, the minimum and maximum specs that it wants to see to get an idea if the engine is healthy or not. This works. It's a very effective test and far too few people actually do it. A lot of troubleshooting time can be saved if you do this up front because that'll give you some indication of how healthy the engine is before you dive in and start turning wrenches. The problem with the compression tester is that first off, the engine has to be assembled. You have to have it together enough so that you can spin it over with the starter motor and generate pressure. If you've got the engine half apart like I do, you can't run a compression test because you have got no way to turn the engine over. Secondly, you need to be able to disable fuel and spark so that you don't start the engine when this thing's hooked up. Uh, in order to do that, in the old days of carburetor, it was pretty simple. You pinched off a fuel line and you unplug the distributor. Now with multi-port computer controlled fuel injection, that's a little more difficult. Uh, some cars have a, a port you can plug in with an OBD2 tool with a test code that allows you to shut that off so you can run a compression test. My com car has an aftermarket computer. It doesn't have a compression test setting on it. So in order to do that, I have to manually turn off fuel and spark, which is doable, but it's a pain in the ass. On top of that, the compression tester doesn't give you any indication as to what the problem is with that cylinder. It'll tell you that a cylinder is not holding pressure. It'll give you an indication there's something wrong inside the engine, but it won't tell you what it is. All it tells you is that, that cylinder is bad. So we're not doing that today. Instead, what we have is this. This is a cylinder leak down tester. The way this works is you hook up a line from there to the spark plug hole exactly the same way the compression tester works. You put the engine at top dead center for that particular cylinder and you pressurize this side with shop air. This gauge records the shop air pressure. This gauge records how much air pressure the cylinder is holding. And if you're clever, you set this side to 100 PSI and then when you read off this side, that allows you to read the amount of air that's being held in the cylinder as a direct percentage. So for example, if you've got 100 PSI on this side and 90% on this side, or 90 PSI on this side, then you know that you're holding 90% of the air and you have 10% leak down. On top of that, you're going to hear where the air is escaping. Air will escape past the rings, so you'll hear it in the oil fill hole or you'll hear it in the dipstick. It'll escape past the intake valve, in which case you'll hear it in the intake, or it'll escape past the exhaust valve, in which case you'll hear it going past the exhaust. So by listening to where the air is coming out of, you get a feel for not just what is leaking, but where it's leaking. And that can help you hone in on whether or not what you need to do is a valve job, or if you've got one bad valve, or if you've got a hole in the piston, or anything like that. It'll, it'll give you some indication as to where your problem is, where the compressor tester just says, good or not good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this thing up, and we're gonna do a leak down test on the Stealth and see just how healthy our, our motor is. Before we start though, we gotta talk about this. One trick with the leak down tester is that you have to put the cylinder at top dead center before you measure it. If the cylinder is anywhere other than top dead center, a valve is going to be open. And if a valve is open, then you're not going to get an accurate reading. It's going to read a bad valve because that valve is open. So you need some way of knowing where top dead center is. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. You can hook whistles up to it. You can stick a rope in there. There's all kinds of things. If you're going to do it, do it right. This is a tool designed specifically to measure it. It's made by a company called uh, Innovative Products of America. And what it is, is a spring-loaded plunger. That end screws into your spark plug. That rests on the piston. And on this end, you get a direct measurement of how high the piston is. 
So you just screw this in, manually crank the motor over by hand by using a uh, socket wrench plugged into the crank pulley, and you just go until it reaches its peak and it comes back down. From there, you can tell where it is, and now you know your top dead center. This tool is grotesquely overbuilt. Uh, they've gone and zinc chromate plated it. It's just a beautiful piece of work, but uh, why screw around with a hokey way of doing it when you can use a tool that does it perfectly? So I've already pulled the spark plug out of the number three hole here. The way Mitsubishi numbers the cylinders, it goes one, three, five, and the backpack, two, four, six. And the firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm pretty sure that I'm on top dead center here, pretty close to it on cylinder number three. That plug is already out, and we're just going to insert our in our top dead center indicator and adjust it. So that just fits in like that. You screw it in, it doesn't have to be tight. You see we're actually at the bottom of the stroke. I'm now gonna go around to the uh, front of the motor and just crank it over until I've got myself at top dead center. So what we're gonna do here is I have a socket wrench plugged into the crank pulley on the nose of the crankshaft and I'm just gonna turn the engine over using the socket until it reaches its peak. And you see it's starting to come back down again. So I'll just reverse it, come back the other way, and that's at top dead center. As easy as that. So there's cylinder three, 93% pressure or 7% leak down. Cylinder four, TDC. Cylinder four, Ninety two cylinder five TDC number five now isn't that interesting sixty two and it's coming out the intake side. That intake valve is not sealing properly. I don't know if that's a problem with the valve or if maybe something got dropped down inside the engine. I've been very careful about keeping that intake manifold taped up while I'm working on it, but it's conceivable something fell in there. So maybe I've got something blocking that valve open. That's why you do these tests. Let's keep on doing the rest of the car. Cylinder six, 90. Cylinder one, 89. Cylinder two, 91. So here's a graphical representation of our results. If we ignore cylinder five for a second, you see we have a low of 89 on cylinder one and a high on cylinder three of 93, with the average being that sort of 91, 92, 93 around that zone. That's okay. Ideally, like a fresh engine should somewhere be in the range of about three to 5% leak down. So that would be a 97 to 95. 10 is a reasonable number. And it's only once you start getting about 15% leak down that you start getting a little bit worried. Interestingly, as you're about to see, we managed to get cylinder five back to 85. And that is acceptable, aside from the fact that we've got a, a very definite leak coming out of the intake. So here we are back at cylinder number five. And after hooking up an airline to the spark plug hole and moving the engine so that the intake valves were just open and back purging it with air, I tried to blow out any foreign obstruction that might be holding the valves open. And nothing observable came out. And I put it back on a compression stroke in top dead center and uh, put a vacuum on the port and blasted it out with air and cycled it through a few times and I've managed to get it up to 85 pounds. So I'm not sure if there was a physical obstruction in there or if the valve is just sticky. What this is telling me though, is that there's definitely a problem in number five and it's a problem with the intake valves not closing all the way. And that means we have to pull the head off and have a look why. And if we're gonna pull the head off, that probably means doing the valve job. Well, definitely means doing the valve job. That valve can be bent, 
the seat could be fucked, it could be just loaded up with crud and it's not closing all the way. Whatever it is, our test has determined that number five is the bad one. And it's interesting how this one played out. So I got lucky in that I've managed to find this problem. It tells me I'm gonna have to uh, do a little more motor work than I was planning on, but this is a stealth. That's kind of what they do. So there you are, that's a leak down test. We've uh, shown how leak down works and we've actually used leak down to catch a problem. And if I sound happy, that's because I'm not. Anyway, my misfortune is uh, your learning, so I guess that's a win. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to know more about our stealth, be sure and click on our website down here below. Or you can also click on Autocross to Win, which is our ebook. And uh, please consider becoming a Patreon. Thanks.